Hey everyone, welcome back to the lab. In this video, we're gonna be exploring how much faster HTMX partial reloads are than MPA or multi-page application page loads. So this year I built most of my side projects with HTMX. HTMX offers big UX improvements for very little added complexity on top of MPAs or multi-page applications. And this basically means that I can build higher quality side projects with less work, which is kind of like the goal as a small creator. So I'm currently building fullstackprojects.xyz, my latest project with HTMX. It's basically a website that generates full stack project ideas. And I thought it would be interesting to use this site to compare the performance of HTMX versus traditional MPA page loads. Okay, so comparing HTMX versus MPAs. So here's full stack projects and we'll take a look at the site itself, but I wanted to do a breakdown of how it's built to kind of show how we're going to be comparing this. And so it's a really simple web page. We've just got a list of items here. And because it's a simple web page, it's basically just served as an MPA. If you just hit the web page the first time, it's just going to do its server side render the whole page and send it down to you. Same way a multi-page application does. Now the difference here is that I've built an HTMX interactive island, which is basically like a component, but it's usually more coarse grained. Um, it's not quite as tiny as like a button. It's usually going to be like a widget, if you will, a area of a page. And I like building this way with HTMX because it gives you a lot of the partial page reload um, benefits without adding extra complexity. And so that's this thing right here. If you want to learn more about how I build with HTMX and especially the idea of interactive islands, I have a post and video on it um, linked here. And so this setup makes it actually a pretty good test subject for comparing HTMX versus multi-page applications because we can easily make it render using both of these techniques, multi-page application and HTMX rendering basically the same content. And so it's really good to compare. Also, because it's so simple, we're going to minimize a lot of the conflating factors that might exist in a larger app. And so this should make it a bit more of a clean experiment. And so the way that we're going to do this is for the multi-page application, we're just going to do a normal browser refresh. So we're just going to hit the page as normal. And so this will render just like a MPA does. And for an HTMX, we can simply click the button, which will trigger an HTMX partial reload. Now, the caveat here is that basically all benchmarks have asterisks, and this is going to be a small N run picking out just one sample that looks semi reasonable. Um, and so this means that, you know, the result is going to be biased. There are conflating factors. I, you know, this isn't a clean room, but I think it's fair enough to say that this is an example of what you could expect in your own app because this is kind of just a, a quick and dirty app itself. So that's the caveat there. Okay, and now let's look at HTMX versus MPA performance. And so I have a screenshot here of kind of what it looks like. We did a, a full refresh and we got the DOM content loaded in about 300 milliseconds. I realized it's gonna be pretty small for um, the video. So let's just go over to fullstackprojects.xyz and run it live. So I'm gonna refresh here and then let's do another refresh just to make sure that, that it's warmed up. And so this is like a warmed up run here. And so we see that we get the full site loaded. I mean, it loaded some stuff, right? And so the full DOM content loaded in about 240 milliseconds here. And we do see a long tail, but we're gonna try to not include that because if we look here, this is actually like, let's see if, can I show you this? Yeah, so if we look there, it's actually um, my analytics. And so we're gonna try to not include that because it's not blocking DOM. Um, but you could imagine on like a real app, you might have a lot of these scripts kind of running in the background on page load um, that you might wanna care about, but we don't care about that here. So what we really care about is up to DOM content loaded and looking at this stuff. And so you can see it takes about 240 milliseconds. So where's that time coming from? Well, the full stack project set X, Y, Z, the content itself is really only taking around 100 milliseconds. Um, and we'll see this reflected on the HTMX side as well. It takes about 100 milliseconds to do the work. But where's this other time coming from? And it's like, well, we also have to load other things in. And this is going to be stuff like, you know, all the scripts that we need to load. And so here we have HTMX itself. You can imagine you might have other scripts that are being loaded in that you might want to use. Maybe if you have images or videos, those are also assets that need to get loaded. Um, here I have more analytics from Cloudflare. I just have a little script on the page. Um, which is Fathom. And so these are all just assets that need to get loaded, um, that the page needs to run. And actually we're missing some of the CSS stuff as well. Where's the CSS? Okay, here's the CSS and stuff. And so like on a page load, you have to go and find all of the styles that you're gonna need. So I'm using Tailwind, so I have to load that in. We have, you know, just my global app stuff. So MPA is doing quite a lot of work 
um, that it needs to do that's not just the content and so this is how we're getting up to this you know 240 250 milliseconds just to load the page even though the main thing we're loading is only about 100 and now if we start using this button here this is the interactive island so every time I click this and let's see if I can show you so interactive island is here spinner um, and then we can see that this is HX targeting itself um, and it's going to go fetch the content and replace itself the interactive island with the new content when i click this a few times we see that it's loading but it's loading quite a lot faster is it actually loading faster not really right so we're still getting these like 110 ish millisecond um, load times which if we look above this is how much it took to load this this web page um, with an MPA. But where we get faster is we don't have to reload all of this stuff, all this other stuff that's kind of shared on the web page um, and stuff. Because we all we have to do is just exchange this partial page that needs to reload. So we don't have to reload any of these other assets. They're already there. We don't have to do that extra work. And that really is the difference between HTMX partial page reloads and MPAs. It's not that it's making the, the thing go faster. It's just basically not duplicating work. And so I showed you this in, you know, the live demo, and but this is also what I got previous to this is, you know, the page load itself is about 110 milliseconds. Um, and it's the same here, just as it's basically the same here, but it's just we don't have to reload those assets every single time. And thus it's going to be faster because, you know, it's just doing less work. Okay, so to conclude, is HTMX faster than MPAs or multi-page applications? And can we assume this means that HTMX is three times faster than multi-page applications? Because that's what we saw in my app. And the answer is not really. Um, it's always going to depend largely on how your app is set up and how it needs to function, um, because all of these things are largely going to play into what speedups you can, you know, achieve. But we can say that HTMX unlocks partial page reloads, which can speed up web pages by avoiding unnecessary work. And my belief is that the main thing that makes SPAs or single page applications feel faster than multi page applications really is their ability to do these partial page reloads. And so HTMX adding this ability into MPAs actually closes that gap quite a bit. And so when we're thinking about, you know, how much faster is HTMX than MPAs, this is a very simple web page that I showed you. And already we can see significant differences in how fast it's loading because it's just reducing a lot of unnecessary work. But for a simple web page, we don't have that much work we're doing anyway, so it's relatively fast. My belief then is that for more complex page loads that have a lot more baggage, you know, larger CSS bundles, larger JS bundles, maybe large video or image assets, that need to be downloaded, these speed ups can actually be much larger because you're only reloading the part of the page that you need, which often doesn't have these big assets involved. It's usually just text or data that is changing. But you know, just my hypothesis. Next. So I've been having a good time building side projects with HTMX. It allows me to build apps faster and simpler than I was able to using front end frameworks like SvelteKit or Next.js, which I've used previously. In many ways, it's brought back the joy of building for me because I don't have to deal with tedious tools that I don't really want to deal with. I'm not doing all this unnecessary plumbing. I'm not having to learn these like very domain specific languages that I don't really care to learn, but I felt like I needed to, to get a decent UX. Instead, I can simply build how I want, which is basically the ham stack, just hypermedia on a modulith, which is great because you can build hypermedia with whatever you want. And you can also build a modulith with whatever you want. So it basically allows you to use the tools that you like using to build a very simple and robust stack for basically any web application. A question for you is what are you using to build web apps? And in particular, what libraries and frameworks do you recommend? This space is always changing. HTMX is like, you know, rising now, but it's still relatively new. So I'm curious if there's other things out there. One thing I've got my eye on is Alpine's version of HTMX. Uh, which I can't remember the name of now, but I have a feeling that more of these things are going to pop up and we're going to start evolving to um, even better, more performance, simpler um, libraries and APIs from here. If you like this post, you might also like what it's like to run HTMX in production, stories from experienced software engineers. You might also be interested in how HTMX allows you to build modern web apps faster and cheaper than bloated client-side SPA frameworks. A comparison against some of those popular ones like SvelteKit and Next.js, which I've used in the past. And finally, you might be interested in why I'm moving from SvelteKit to F Sharp for all of my websites. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.